Okay, in this lesson, we're going to be making a cold spell. So in the 04 begin file, I've got a NURBS curve that I made, CV curve, and I've got a fluid in there, which is similar settings to what we had in the last lesson. So it's just a 2D fluid with the emitter there, and they're on the same exact plane. So they're both at uh, zero in Z so that they match up. So what I'm going to, going to do first is I'm going to, in my outliner, I'm going to select my fluid emitter and then my curve. And under animation, I'm going to go to uh, constrain, motion paths, attach to motion path. I'm going to go to the option box. So I'm going to have that attach. For time range, I'm going to have time slider. So that means from 0 to 150, it's going to move it over time. And I'm just going to leave everything else the way it is here. It's kind of default settings. And I'm going to attach that. And what that's going to do is it's going to move. Oh, it's actually offset because I slid my, I slid my fluid, which uh, it didn't like. So if I change that down to 0, there we go. Now it stays on the line. And the reason that happened is I had translated my fluid up before I did that. So it was getting a double transform. But so this is what we have now. Our fluid is being emitted along this, along this spline. Beautiful. Now it doesn't look very cold yet. We want to do a cold spell. So what I want to do is I want to make this fluid, when it's emitted, I want it to sink. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, give it a negative buoyancy. Uh, but first, let me do some things here. I'm going to turn on forward advection, which is going to affect the way that this gets created. That's down here in, uh, sorry, it's under the dynamic simulation tab. I'm going to turn on high detail solve. I'm going to say all grids. And uh, let's do some of the things we did in the last lesson as well. We're going to under density scale, I'm going to crank this up a bit so it's a little more dense. Let's change that to 1. Buoyancy, we set to 10 in the last lesson, something like that, which made the fluid go up faster. See how it goes up? Well, cold air sinks. So I want to go negative 10 on this. So what that'll do, if you've ever opened a freezer on a hot day or something, you see the kind of smoke that comes out or the uh, vapor that sinks. That's kind of what I'm emulating here. And already that's looking kind of cool. Get it? It's a cold spell. OK, so I'm going to, um, jokes are free, folks. Uh, I'm going to uh, change some things here. I want to add some um, velocity swirl. I'm a big fan of the velocity swirl. Let's give it a swirl of two. Let's see what that looks like. That's kind of neat looking. Now let's uh, let's give it some dissipation as well. So let's let's say 0.25. Let's see what happens with that. Now, if you wanted to, you could go much higher with that dissipation. Let's say two, and that's going to make it kind of die off much faster. Which, in some cases, you might want. That kind of looks neat. It might be a little too much. Maybe a uh, 1.5, let it last a little longer, let it linger. All right, yeah, that's looking kind of nice. Now let's uh, let's set some color here. I'm going to go down to my shading, bring my transparency down. So it, you don't want to go all the way to black because that looks like garbage there, but uh, just a little bit. And uh, let's go down here, and I'm going to give it a little bit of glow to, let's say, 0.5. And under my color, I'm going to change this color input to density. And I'm going to give it some nice blue, something that looks cold. Let's see what that looks like. Well, it's not, uh, it's not really doing it for me. I got to bring that down. I guess it doesn't stay very dense that long. Now, the other thing you can do, rather than sliding this here, which you can do. You can also affect the input bias, which is going to kind of skew the calculations one direction or the other. So if you want to go more to the right, you bring your input bias higher. 
And if you want it to kind of hug the uh, the left side, you bring your input bias lower, and it's going to kind of favor that left side. So I want to go somewhere in the middle here, and let's really go crazy. I want to have this white happen here, but let's give it a really dark core. And I can just kind of bring, yeah, there we go. That's looking kind of nice. Sometimes it helps to make sound effects while you're looking at it. Uh, let me turn everything off, show none. And I just want to show my fluids. Let's see, Let's see what that looks like. That's looking cold. All right, now the other thing I want to do is I want to uh, let me bring this back again. I want to make some secondary effects come off of this. So maybe there's some uh, something cool I can do here quickly. Let's see. Um, let's do um, n particles. Let's do a an emitter. We'll create an emitter, and I'll call this uh, snow shooter. And we'll keep it at Omni. So that means they're going to emit from a point. Uh, we'll keep the particle rate the same as it is there, speed, all that stuff. We'll just keep it simple. I'm going to create that. And let's see what happens here. So now we've got these, uh, I'll change my color back to black. We've got this, these little white dots that are falling here. And uh, those are the end particles that I made. So how do we get the end particles? I want it to be on this leading edge here. How do we get that to follow? Well, very simply, we could do the exact same thing we did with the emitter. So I can go into my outliner, grab my snow shooter. That's the thing that's the emitter that's making the particles. And then I'm going to also select curve one. I'm going to go into animation, constrain, motion paths, attached to motion path. And my settings were the same as what they were before, so that should just work. Yes, there we go. So the snow falls and the coldness comes off of them. Now, I probably don't want those particles to last that long. I can go into my um, settings here and I can change my end particles here. Lifespan, I'm going to say instead of live forever, I'm going to say random range. Um, lifespan random, let's say one. Let's see what that looks like. So they should just last for about a second. Yeah. And we can go even shorter than this. I'm going to go down lower here as well. So that looks a little bit too like a, too much like a burning fuse. Uh, I liked it a little bit longer. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, it looks nice. Now there's lots of things you can do with this. You know, you can play around with it longer. Now my end particles didn't render because I didn't set up a render setting for those. Let's um, do that quickly. Uh, my end particles here, let's see what they are going to render as. Uh, let's see. No, that's fine. Okay, particle render type. I'm gonna change this to blobby surface. So now they should render. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, there they are. Awesome. Now I can also, just very quickly, I can uh, set a material on those. I'm just going to create a material. Just the Lambert is fine. I'm going to call this uh, snow shader. And all I want this to do is be some kind of cool glowy thing. So maybe it'll be like a similar blue color to what we have for that smoke stuff, the mist. And I'm also going to go down here to uh, special effects. I'm going to say glow intensity 0.75, and I'm going to hide source. And then I'm going to select my particles. So I have just my particles, and I'm going to right click on the snow shader, and I'm going to say assign material to selection. And what that's going to do is it's going to give them a cool glow. You can kind of see them in there. You'd see it better if this were in motion, but uh, you can render that on your own. But that's basically it. Super quick and dirty effect making snow. And the effect works best because you've layered elements. Now, I could also add some sort of glowy thing to the head of this. Maybe there's uh, some kind of um, 
cool thing I could do with the environment. If I were put, if I put a light on this, the light would kind of go around like this and might cast shadows on things or illuminate different elements in the scene. But uh, for the most part, that's it. Our, our cooled, cool magic. So cool. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.